Welcome to Stories That Matter. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my special guest, Bob Davis, the voice of, well, most of you would know him as the voice of the Jayhawks, and uh, some would know him as the voice of the uh, Royals. And Bob, thank you so, and some of you would know him as the voice from Hayes when he was a much younger guy and uh, was in Hayes for a while. Bob, how you doing? Doing okay, watching it snow here and seeing what's in store for us today. But yeah, I had a great 16 year run out in Hayes and then we moved to Lawrence in 84. So I've been in Kansas the whole time. Yeah, you know, every time we do one of these stories that matter, shows i'm always interested to know who who was it that invested in you bob because uh, what if i'm talking to an athlete or anybody i'm talking to i say who who was it was it a mom was it a dad who took you under their wing and sort of pointed you in this direction and you had a god-given ability to be able to do what you do because many times people can't even begin to and you turn the camera on i've seen people they can't talk then all of a sudden, but somebody invested in you. Was it your dad? Well, I'm sure it was both parents, but I mean, was it your dad that pointed you into the uh, sports casting? Well, he really wanted me to go to law school and, and do whatever came from that. Uh, I did go to law school for a year uh, back in the early 80s or late 60s, I should say, but my draft deferment ran out. So I joined the National Guard and then I, when I got home from basic training and so on, I uh, wanted to get into broadcasting because that had always been a career goal of mine. So I was able to find a job and it, as luck would have it at one of the best broadcast operations in the state, uh, KAYS radio and TV out in Hayes, but with, with a, as far as I'm concerned, one of the great owner operators in Kansas broadcast history, Bob Schmidt. And I worked, got a job there as a disc jockey and uh, entry level type stuff. And then uh, uh, our sports and news director, one guy was both, uh, left KYS to go to Lansing, Michigan. Uh, Keith Cummings was his name and he did the ball games and, and was the news director and so on. But they let me take over the broadcasting of the sports and we did a lot. We had Fort Hayes, we had two local high schools and area high schools. So that's really how, how the media part worked. It was, I, I wanted to do that, but it presented itself at an opportune time, and I got busy doing ball games out in the Hayes area. I, I can't imagine, Bob, with you on the radio doing, oh, well, here's Sonny and Cher, and now here's this one. I can't imagine that you were doing those in the early days. Did you do those, the music? Oh, sure. <laughs> we had some good, good personnel, program director who's now retired. Mike Cooper was a real good music director, and we had a couple of other veterans who worked there and it was it was a good group and we took great pride in how the station sounded and our and our news operations so it just all kind of blended together yeah and of course now that you've finished your career you got towards the end of it and you uh, you wrote a book called the dream is real what what prompted you to do that well jeff bolig with whom i uh, worked on the on the book uh, jeff had been after me for a period of a, a few years to do something like this. Jeff grew up in Hayes where I was working and then he came to KU and was in uh, media relations in the athletic department. And he'd been telling me that we ought to think about doing something like this. Didn't We didn't know there'd be national championships and that kind of thing along with it, but, but we did it and uh, had a great deal of fun, met a lot of great people and uh, it's just chugging along now a, a little more. We've got really good people out in Hayes carrying on and, and uh, I was just fortunate to be part of it. Well, Bob, as I understand it, of course, you, you have uh, 48 years in the business. Did it go by in a hurry? Well, it depends on what day it was. <laughs> Some <laughs> days were a little longer than others, but we did if a lot of- In the airport, it didn't go by so long or so quick. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how that works. But uh, <laughs> you know, Kansas is a great state in the broadcasting industry. And with people like Bob Schmidt and other people who either owned or operated stations. So I think the reputation of Kansas broadcasting has always been good. Uh, you and I talked earlier about a mutual friend of ours, Dev Nelson, who was at Kansas State for many years and, and with WIBW for a period of time. So I, I was just fortunate to be one of those guys when all this stuff was getting rolling. 
Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm anxious to see your book. I haven't got the chance to read it yet, but I understand it's 14 chapters, 200 pages, and it's full of stories and facts, of course, I would anticipate, but a lot of stories. Do you have a favorite story out of the book? And that's pretty tough to do when you, when you have as many stories as you do. Yeah, I don't know if I have a favorite story, but the collection of stories and the people that I met and the coaches that I worked with and you know, you, a pretty good fraternity of broadcasters in Kansas. I've always thought our broadcasters were as good as anybody. And, and uh, you know, w if you win a couple of national championships with teams you cover, that, that lends credence to what it's all about. But uh, uh, we were just there at the right time to cover a lot of great events. And it wouldn't, in my case, that I was such a great broadcaster, I was just in the right place at the right time. And and a lot of people that I met uh, were along the same lines. And uh, we just had a good group of broadcasters in the state. And Hayes was among the best. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. And uh, in regards to um, getting the job over at KU, getting the chance to go there, I had read this somewhere, or I invented it, I'm not sure which, that said that you applied, uh, at maybe sent out 50 applications before you got but that's about true. right. I, you know, the toughest thing in broadcasting I, that I learned is getting that first job. You know, we only hire people with experience. Well, I don't have any experience, but if you'd hire me, then I would. But, you know, but working for a guy like, like Bob Schmidt and other people at that station was a huge boost. And, and uh, you know, Jeff grew up in Hayes, so he kind of had the lay of the land out there and what we were doing. And we had both radio and television. My first uh, work there was in 1968 and that was an election year presidential election year and uh, Bob Dole was running for the senate for the first time and there were a lot of major political figures in the state so you know the things lined up and being out there was a big boost to me yeah I, I can imagine that it would and but then now when you transition from Hayes over to Lawrence what what was the biggest thing you had to deal with then was it crowd size, the noise? What, what was it? Well, I think it's the same job. It's just a little bigger venue. Uh, and we were, you know, lucky to follow, you know, Larry Brown was the basketball coach and we had good football coaches and uh, winning never hurts if you're in the sports broadcasting business. And, you know, with the basketball uh, was just starting to roll at KU. KU had great basketball tradition. But being there at this period of time, uh, the stars kind of lined up and I was fortunate to be carried along with it. Yeah, well, you know, and you not only carried along with them, but you carried them quite a ways too because you could listen to your, your broadcasts and um, it wasn't one-sided. I'm just telling you what I saw. I'm just sharing that with you. And it's not a bad call from the ref. It's not this, and the, but for this happening from the ref, we would have won. I, I could always count on it. Uh, it was just, um, here's the facts. Well, and that's, that's part of the story. And we had uh, a great fan base out in, in West Central Kansas. And so that helped as well. And, you know, Kansas Association of Broadcasters started out as the Kansas Association of Radio Broadcasters. And then they later after a little turmoil, added the TV guys and realized, hey, we're all broadcasters. So we did that and, and uh, you know, it got bigger and bigger. And then I moved to Lawrence and worked at a station in Kansas City. So it was, I certainly wasn't the great leader that <laughs> brought all this about. I was the house by the side of the road when it all went by and, and talked about it. And I understand from my research on you that you met a one of my heroes, and that was Mickey Mantle. I never got to meet him, but uh, I understand you met him when you were about five years old. Yeah, I, I was five. I, I, it might be a bit of a stretch to say I met him, but I saw him play. He was 17 years old. His first year of pro baseball, he was playing shortstop for the Independent Yankees. He had great speed. He hadn't moved to the outfield yet, but uh, yeah, that was part of it. He was there. Bill Verton, who was a longtime major league star, uh, was a year behind Mickey, he played in Independence in 1950, I guess it was. And uh, he became a major league manager and, and solid player. So there were other people at Independence besides Mickey, who, who, by the way, was only 17 years old 
when he played for the Independent Yankees. My dad was the sports editor of the newspaper in Independence, so he, that was one of his beats was the minor league baseball team. So he got to interview Mickey on occasion. I don't think Mickey was much of a talker in those days. He was very shy and uh, only 17, as I mentioned, but uh, he went on to have a pretty decent career. Very good career. And I think he got used to talking once he started hanging around with Billy Martin some. I think he then, he got the hang of it. I think he did, and the hang of a few other things probably as well. But, but, uh, yeah, we he better was leave that one alone, hadn't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Well, Bob, I saw that uh, when I was doing my research, I saw you were a 14-time Kansas Sportscaster of the Year. That's absolutely amazing. Well, and it wasn't just me. I was just there when things happened and did my best to cover it. And uh, Kansas has had a number of really good sports broadcasters over the years. I know you have been were acquainted with Dev Nelson, who was certainly one of my heroes, and the guys at KU and guys around the state. So we had a good collection of broadcasters and journalists, and many of whom covered sports in Kansas. So uh, I was fortunate to get in that line. And, uh, of course, you were friends with uh, all of the coaches, whether it was basketball or football. But do uh, you have any recollections of uh, Pepper Rogers? Not really. I was not at KU at that time, but my partner at KU, Max Falkenstein, <clears throat> was among those who worked with Pepper. Uh, I, the KU broadcast, and in, in those days, it wasn't an exclusivity thing. You didn't just go in and pay a rights fee and become the broadcaster. There were more than one originations of football games and basketball games. So a lot of people covered KU and to a similar extent, K-State or, or Wichita State or whatever, but getting it at Hayes and when I did, we had Fort Hayes State, which was a, a, a division two school or NAIA, a small college at first, but it got you in the, in the door covering sports in the state. And that, that was a great place to do it. And a, Great place to learn. And then what about when you went over to the Royals? Uh, who was your partner in the broadcast booth then? Primarily Paul or were there others? Primarily Paul Splitorf, who I had worked with in Kansas City Radio on pre and post game coverage of the Royals. But he would, he'd be the main one. And uh, we got to be very good friends. We did the television together uh, for a period of time and, and some other things. But, uh, you know, how many times he talked to somebody in the media and they say, well, I was in the right place at the right time. And uh, sometimes you have to be a little lucky. And I, I certainly was uh, in my career. Yeah. And I hear that same thing from the entertainers when we talk to them. There's a lot of people with the God-given talent that I have talking about the entertainers. And they say, I was just, just got the right break at the right time. And, and from there it took off. And that's the way that it worked. Doesn't hurt to be lucky. Be a little no. lucky at times. That doesn't hurt to be lucky. You're exactly right. Well, the book is called The Dream is Real, and uh, you can be purchased at uh, Amazon.com, and then there's a number of stores that are also handling it that are in the close proximity. Have you had autograph sessions that you've gone to? Well, we haven't as yet. I, I just think that could be in the future plans, but with our lifestyle right now, you know, we can't get out much. You can't have big groups of people, but uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do to work that out. But I think we're getting the word out around the state and this hopefully this book will help in that regard too. Well I think so Bob and you've got an amazing career and you're a very humble man and that's and that's awesome that speaks volumes and that's why I'm sure Jeff said uh, uh, Bob let's see if we can do the book and I imagine you for uh, three four five years no sometime we will sometime and Jeff probably had to stay at it or it wouldn't have happened. He just nagged me to death. <laughs> and we finally didn't know Jeff's a good friend and he had done a couple of books before about, you know, Allen Fieldhouse and some other historical things centered around uh, KU athletics. So he had a pretty good running start. You know, you mentioned that uh, the first time you walked into Allen Fieldhouse as the announcer, what, what was your feelings? I was excited, but first time I walked in Allen Fieldhouse, I was a you know kid in junior high school and they had a guy named Will Chamberlain uh, playing for KU. So that was an interesting start as a fan, but uh, it, it just lined up right time, right place. And, uh, you know, KU is a wonderful place. And people like Deb Nelson, who was at Kansas State, were, were, were great mentors. And uh, I was so happy to be at KU during that time. We 
won a couple of national championships and and uh, did went all over the country from uh, Hank Max and I used to say from Anchorage, Alaska to Maui, Hawaii to Miami, Florida. We covered the Jayhawks, and that was a pretty good uh, bully pulpit, as uh, Ronald Reagan used to say. So right, right place, right time, and a lot of things that went with it, like winning. Winning's not a bad marketing no. concept. <laughs> Makes a lot more fun to be, yeah, the, sure does. be the broadcaster. Well, when you, when you went into uh, Allen Fieldhouse that first time that you were broadcasting, did you glance over to where uh, you had been seated before in the bleachers? Did you look over there and just say, you know, I used to sit right about in that area? I sit over there. Yeah, I, I did. I didn't, you know, think of so much in those terms as, well, look where we are now. This is, this is really exciting and, and uh, just fun to be a small part of the whole picture. Well... Bob, thank you so much, and, and I would encourage everybody to get the book, The Dream is Real, by Bob Davis and uh, Jeff Bolig. And uh, thank you, thank you for your many, many years of dedication to Kansas and uh, to the sports and 14-time uh, sportscaster. Absolutely amazing, Bob. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks, Doug. Nice right. to talk to you. All right, you take care.